everyone, my name is Jenny and today Mohammed, Jackie and I will cover the physics of how common kitchen appliances work. But before we begin, Mohammed will cover electrical safety in the kitchen. Hello classmates of Sci 206, my name is Mohammed, and as Jenny mentioned, before understanding the science about cooking in the kitchen, and since we're all stuck at home under COVID restrictions, this is the perfect time to cover certain safety practices and avoid things like this from happening. Let's dive right in. Here I have two commonly used kitchen appliances, a blender and a fridge or freezer. Both appliances share the commonality of being powered on by plugging them into the wall, but this then raises the question, how in fact does electricity and science work behind these handy tools? Looking at the blender, when we plug it into the wall, the electrical currents flow from the plug, through the wire, and to the appliance. However, it is currently built up of potential energy because although electrical currents are flowing through the thin metal filaments in the wire, the power switch is not yet activated, so as you can see, nothing happens. But once we hit the power switch on, as I'll do so real quick, you can see that this potential energy gets converted into mechanical energy as it powers the motor to spin the blades inside. As they spin, it creates a vacuum effect in the center of the jar, and the high-speed circling motion is what blends the food. As the food is being blended, the blade passes off some of the kinetic energy to the food, and this vigorous stirring is what causes the food to increase in speed, the viscosity of food to decrease, and also releasing small amounts of heat as byproduct, and thus actually increasing the overall temperature of the food. With that being said, take precaution when blending extremely thick foods, because the longer you have the blender working and blending food, the higher that the chance that it can overheat and cause potential damage, burning, or additional harm. Also, it does sound obvious, but make sure you take note of how the wire looks. If you see that it's frayed or has any rips, this can also cause any electrocution or shock, so just be careful. So now that you know a little bit more about kitchen safety and certain protocols, just think, the kitchen is a laboratory and cooking is another experimental science. I'll now pass it off to Jenny where she'll go into depth about how toasting works and convection ovens. Thanks guys. To begin, I'm pretty sure all of us has toasted bread at one point, but today I'll be explaining that process using a convection oven. Electrical energy first flows into the oven and gets converted into thermal energy. This energy is emitted through the bulbs and metal interiors located inside the oven, which act as conductors to heat up and toast the bread. Convection ovens are great because not only do they come with a variety of settings, they work more effectively by trapping and distributing heat through the use of a fan, which results in your food cooking evenly and quickly. Hi everyone, today uh, I'll be explaining uh, a very basic process that many of us do in our regular lives, and this process is otherwise known as microwaving. Uh, and as you may know, some of us may have been using it more frequently due to quarantine because of COVID, and may not still fully understand how a microwave actually works. Uh, but have no fear, uh, today I'll be explaining essentially how a microwave essentially heats up your food and I'll also be going over a few tips and, a few tips and tricks that you can use uh, to actually make your food a little better when microwaving. And in case you guys have forgotten, that is what a microwave looks like, you know, a nice big microwave oven. But anyway, uh, so what exactly is a microwave? Uh, essentially a microwave is comprised of an electron tube that's called a magnetron. And essentially this is what creates microwaves in your oven. And these waves essentially cause the water molecules in your food to vibrate up and down or oscillating. And that kinetic energy that is created ultimately releases heat. And that heat that is produced is what heats up your food, essentially. And let's move on to the demo, shall we? Uh, so now onto the actual demo. Uh, one of my favorite tricks, especially with leftover rice from the fridge from last night, is to actually uh, add some water when microwaving. Uh, Howard, based off the explanation I just gave earlier on, uh, I'll show you essentially what happens when you when you essentially just uh, microwave rice. So here we have um, some leftover rice from last night, and as you can see, the texture is kind of dry. So I'll be microwaving this for 30 seconds, and we'll see what happens. All right. All right. Now that we're back from microwaving the rice for 30 seconds, we can see that it has gone a lot hotter and that uh, there is a bit of water, if you can see, on the bottom. Now, essentially, what we've done is just heat up the rice for 30 seconds in the microwave, but it's a lot more dry. So a nice trick to know when heating up leftover rice from last night is to actually add some water here. So if you just add a bit more water, it becomes a lot more moist and probably tastes a lot better than eating very dry and bland rice. All right, now that we microwave the rice with the added water now, you can see it's a lot more moist and soft. So 
hopefully um, that that has uh, given you another tip for when you're microwaving food during this quarantine. Toodles. <laughs> Bye. Now that we have covered the physics behind how a convection oven and microwave work, along with electrical kitchen safety, we hope that this provides you with a further understanding of the science behind these appliances. This concludes the end of our video, and we thank you for watching.